Nagaland observed International Day of Older Persons with a pledge not to discriminate against the elders and allowed them to age gracefully while acknowledging their service for the uplift of society. The event was held at Highland Park, Kohama on October 1st, organized by the Department of Social Welfare, Nagaland Government. The theme of the day was, The Resilience and Contributions of Older Women. The special guest of the occasion, Nok Wangnau, advisor for social welfare, HG and CD handed over an award to four distinguished senior citizens Dr. Joyce Zinu Ngami and Professor Talit Suba Alingar under state level while, Vizosal Luho of Kuzma village and Vitol Sothu of Vishwema village under Kohama district respectively. Wang Nao, while appreciating the Good Samaritan work of the social department, called upon all the officers and staff of the department to work sincerely and honestly for the people. He also highlighted the achievements of the social welfare department. Delivering a speech on the theme, Martha R. Ritz, Commissioner and Secretary, Social Welfare said this year's theme is to celebrate the life of well-deserved older women and men who have greatly contributed to society. Ritz said that the Naga society regards the presence of older persons as a blessing and they hold a special place of respect and honor. She said that the Department of Social Welfare has social security benefits in place for the aged and vulnerable, and these are provided through various national social assistance programs. She informed that as per the 2011 census, the elder population of Nagaland stands at 139,494 or roughly 7% of the total population of the state. Assuming that this proportion remains constant over the next 15 years, the Nagaland Vision 2030 stated that the number of old age people will increase to approximately 2.23 lakhs by 2030, she added. Earlier, Asangla Jameer, Assistant Director compared the event while Tosheli Jamomi, Director Social Welfare proposed the vote of thanks. Nangam and Konang enthralled the gathering with a special song and the vote of thanks was delivered by Nokcharanla Longchar, Additional Director. The event was followed by a health mela conducted by the Department of Health and Family Welfare where the senior citizens were provided free medical services.
give time to Srimati Martha Alise, Commissioner and Secretary, Social Welfare, to keep, give a speech on the theme, the resilience and contributions of older women. May I call the woman to take speech? As we know, the Naga society regards the presence of older people as a sign of blessing. With old age being synonymous with qualities like wisdom, knowledge and maturity. They hold a special place of respect and honour and I hope that we continue to uphold these values for many generations to come. This year we celebrate the UN International Day of Older Persons on the theme is Resilience and Contribution of Older Women. We celebrate the life of well-deserved older women who have greatly contributed to the society. Notwithstanding the challenging environment with resilience and defying the odds, <coughs> the past three years of the COVID-19 pandemic has made us aware of the socio-economic, environmental, health and climate-related impacts on the lives of older persons, particularly the older women who constitute the majority of older persons. The theme serves as a reminder of the significant role older women play in traversing global challenges and contributing their solutions with resilience and fortitude. <coughs> Recognizing the vital contributions of older women and promoting the inclusion of their voices, perspectives and needs are critical to create meaningful policies to enhance a holistic response to local, national and global challenges and catastrophes. <coughs> to highlight the resilience of older women in the face of environmental, social, economic and lifelong inequalities, number two is to raise awareness of the importance of improved worldwide data collection, disaggregated by age and gender, and number three is to call on the member states, the UN entities, UN Women and Civil Society to include older women in the center of all policies ensuring gender equality as described in the United Nations Secretary General's report. So these are the three main objectives for this year. But when coming back to our local context, in Nagaland, at present, as per the 211 census, the elderly population stands at 1,39,494, or roughly around 7% of the total population of the state. Assuming that this proportion remains constant over the next 15 years, the Nagaland Vision 2030 stated that the number of old age people will increase to approximately 2.23 lakhs by 2030. This implies the increase in life expectancy of older women, of older people, making it more important for us to have a support system in place. In this regard, the Department of Social Welfare has social security benefit programs for the aged and the vulnerable, and these are provided through various national social assistance programs. Nagaland in its current state does, does see women in a variety of occupations and professions that have been instrumental in bringing about many changes in our society. As such, um, they have, also be, they have also been many older women who have served and contributed to society in various capacities even after their retirement. For instance, we have the case of Dr. Timsa Lao, who is an accomplished author and a retired professor of literature. After retiring as a professor for, uh, of literature, she was also the chairman of the State Women Commission after her retirement and she continues to write books, to publish books even today. We also have other, the, the, all the chairperson of the Women Commission who have come and gone, have all been, have been illustrious, uh, they have been, they have had an illustrious career and they have carried on the functioning and they have brought up lots of changes by being uh, the chairperson of the Women Commission. Then we have another example uh, of, in, in, in the form of Madam Kiram Sangraj, who is a partnership. She was uh, also a member of the NPAC and later on went to become a member of the UPAC. Not only that, there are so many unsung heroes. Our awardees today have also uh, excelled in their own form and they've contributed so much even after, uh, becoming, uh, after becoming senior citizens. 
আজি আমি এতে উঠা তো বেশি খুশি পাইছে আজি আমার বাবা খান কি আইটি নাচে এটা আমি খান চারটা সিনিয়র সিটিজেন্স খানকে আমি খান অবর্ড দিবলে আছে দুইটা তো স্টেট পড়া আর দুইটা তো ডিস্ট্রিক্ট পড়া আর এই সার্টিফিকেট অবর্ড আমি খান দিয়া তো দুসরা নহি কিনা তাই খান সোসাইটিতে কি ভাল কাম করে কিনা আছে এই হিসাবকে আমি খান তাই খানকে চুরি কিনা আছে এটা আপনি খানকে জানাই দিয়ে আছে তো এটা আমি ফার্স্ট স্টেট লাগা করিব দ্য ফার্স্ট স্টেট ফিমেল অবর্ডি ইস শ্রীমতি জয়েস জিলিউ আঙ্গামী এজ সেভেন্টি ফাইভ ইয়ার্স হু ইজ দ্য রেসিডেন্ট অফ আকা চান্দ মাটি কহিমা শি ইজ আ ডক্টর বাই প্রফেশন হু পাস্ট হাই এম বি ডিএস ফ্রম কলকাতা ইউনিভার্সিটি ইন দ্য ইয়ার নাইনটিন সেভেন্টি টু ডক্টর জয়েস ইজ আ ভার্সিফাইং পার্সোনালিটি She is a counselor and communicator of the youth. Dr. Joyce has a vast professional as well as working experience. To name a few, from 1973 to 1985, she has worked in the United Kingdom as senior house officer and registrar in gynae and obstetrics and venerology. 1988 to 2008, she has served as general practitioner, project officer, clinical coordinator in the state. 1999 to 2004, she was the NGO advisor of Nagaland State AIDS Control Society. 2014 to date, she is the executive director of Society for the Welfare of Children Affected by HIV and AIDS. In 2001, she initiated the Kekre Foundation, that is the care and support for people living with HIV. In the same year, she also initiated the N Nagadao, that is the network of Nagaland Drugs AIDS Organization. From February 2017 till date, Dr. Joyce is the President of the Nagaland State Medical Council. 2019 till date, Medical Officer, ODIC Kripa Foundation. From 2010 to 2020, Advisor to Nagaland Parents Association for Disabled, that is NAPAD. Dr. Joyce is also a keen writer and has published several books and journals, to name a few, a chapter on the facts of life for class 8 students for NBCC, Northeast Drug Scenario in the CMAI Newsletter, and Journey to Recovery, a collection of testimonies from recovering addicts. She is also a recipient of two awards, the Classic Award in 2001 in recognition of HIV AIDS awareness to the general public and the women in particular, and the President Silver Star Award 2004 from National Bharat Scout and Guide for Outstanding Contribution. Alingar, who was born on the 1st of May 1937. He hails from Chanki village under Mogokchum district. He passed his HSLC in the year 1955, BA in the year 1959, and MA history in the year 1962. He joined the government service on the 17th of April 1963 and retired on the 30th of April 1994. The various posts held during his service are April 1963 to June 1968, lecturer in history, Fazal Ali College, Mokokchong. June 1968 to August 1973, professor in history, Fazal Ali College, Mokokchong. September 1973 to April 1974, editor, district gazetteers under education department, Kohima. May 1977 to March 1977, physical education officer under the youth resources and sports. March 1977 to March 1979, Inspector of School for State, South Division, that is Kohima, Peg, Perrin, and Dimapur. March 1979 to August 1983, Deputy Director of Education in charge of higher education. August 1983 to December 1986, Joint Director of Education, SCERT, January 1987 to January 1990, Additional Director of School Education, SCRT. January 1990 to June 1990, Director of School Education, SCRT, and June 1990 to April 1994, Director of School Education, Nagaland. The honorary service that has been given by Professor Talit are, during his university days, he was actively involved in the youth ministry and motivated many youth towards spiritual growth and he formed the Union of Evangelical Students of India, Nagaland branch. In the year 1964, Sri Talitsuba 
was chosen to attend the NCC pre-commission training in infantry. He was awarded second lieutenant and rose to the rank of captain. Through this, he motivated many Nama youth and eventually many joined the police service. Even till today, he is involved in motivating the youth towards spiritual growth. On the 18th of January 2020, the Our Youth Community has acknowledged his dedication towards the youth by awarding him. The district female awardee is Srimati Viltone Sotho, who was born on the 2nd of April 1941 and hails from Biswama village. She is the fourth child of late Pucho Sotho and late Kasu Sotho. In the year 1980, she was wedded and is blessed with two sons and four grandchildren. Srimati Viltone Sotho did not receive any formal education. She took to cultivation, weaving and sewing as a profession to support the family. Her work experience and honorary services are as follows. In the late 1950s, she served as a nanny, which was a common job in those days at Kohima town, for three years, and she rendered her free service to the family without any payment. In 1958 to 1962, she served as an area representative of the Ranchi Women Organization. From 1965 to 1970, she rendered her service to the Viswema Baptist Church Youth Department Executive Body. During the year 1971 to 1973, she served as chairperson of Viswema Baptist Church Women Department. It was during her tenure that the Viswema Baptist Church built the old church located above National Highway 2. From 1993 to 2003, she served as vice chairperson of Viswema Christian Revival Church Women Department for four consecutive terms. Even though Srimati Viltole Sotu received no formal education, God has immensely blessed her with wisdom as she can read the Tenyade dialect and do basic mathematics which has helped her in her day-to-day -day life. The male awardee of the district is Sri Vizosil Loho, son of late Dozehe Loho, who was born on the 10th of November 1940 and who hails from Kuzama village. He married late Puho Loho in the year 1965 and is blessed with two daughters, two sons and nine grandchildren. His education qualification is Metropolitan and CTH Theology between the year 1962 and 1964. The work experience, 1965, the youth promoter of Southern Angami Baptist Church Council, 1966, youth promoter Angami Baptist Church Council, 1967 to 1969, Pochuri field in charge, Pochuri Baptist Council, 1970 to 1980, Evangelist Angami Baptist Church Council, 1981 to 1983, Pastor Kuzama Baptist Church, 1984 to 1986, Pastor Tenenye Church, Mokokchum. His honorary services are Vice President of the Angami Baptist Church Council, one tenor from 1976 to 1978, President Southern Angami Baptist Church Council, two tenors, 1974 to 1976. President Pastor Dikon Kroto, Angami Baptist Church Council, one tenor, 1982 to 1983. Vice President Southern Angami Public Organization, one tenor, 1997 to 1999. VDP Secretary Kuzama, one tenor, 1989 to 1991. Chairman Kuzama Village Council, two tenor, 2006 to 2011, President Kuzama Baptist Church, two tenors, 2012 to 2017, and lastly, he is a church elder of Kuzama Baptist Church since 2020 till date. Thank you. I just want to say thank you, a big thank you, for the department, for giving us this uh, wonderful award and um, in recognition of the little work that I was um, involved with. It was um, one evening I was coming back from one of the many meetings that we have had um, regarding uh, social issues. You know, we're very concerned for many of the social issues that are here in our community, in our society. 
And as we were coming back, I just thought, why am I so passionate, so concerned for, for the issues that are here in our state? And I had wondered, because um, I wasn't doing it for money or for fame, but there was a deep passion within me that I have to do something. And it was only later on, for 25 years, more than 25 years, I had worked with the marginalized, the um, uh, people who got into chemical abuse, HIV AIDS and the youth. And so as I was pondering over it, it was only recently, recently in one of the sermons of our pastor, that I came to realize this passion was not an inborn thing in me, but it was God's Spirit calling me. This was my call um, to the purpose that I was created for. And this wonderful award, I received a great um, appreciation to the departments and to the people who recognize the little work that I do. And I received this with great gratitude on behalf of myself as well as all the people who are working with us in the social issue. And we thank the social department for constantly supporting us in our work to uh, address a little bit. It's like a tip in the, in the ocean, a drop in the ocean, that uh, the social concerns are still great and it is still growing. And so there's so much more to do. But thank you so much um, to, um, to Sir as well as to the departments for recognizing the little work that we are able to do. Thank you so much. Our respected leaders in our dear fellow citizens, first of all, on this occasion of International Day of Older Persons, I greet you all very warmly and happily. I feel it is like a dream for me to be in the midst of you all, standing all of 89 years. It was a pleasant surprise for me to learn that I have also been selected by you to be honored with this state level senior citizens award. I am indeed humbled to receive this award from you today. I am aware of the fact that there will be many Nana senior citizens today who have lived their lives for the cause of our people all throughout their lives, making great contributions in different areas, <clears throat> bringing great transformation into our land. I therefore receive this honor representing all my peers. I am truly grateful to you all for your kind decision to come for this hour on me and much of all to God, our loving Heavenly Father, for an eventful, long life. I want to make a very sincere appeal to all Nata senior citizens living today. We are always grateful to God for having been given such a long span of life. When many of our own senior friends are no more with us today, during the remaining short span of life, let us strive to live for the cause of our people. Let us make a most determined decision today for us to be spent fully our lives for our people, encouraging, exhorting, and guiding them with lessons learned in our lives. I would like to close my speech from the words of the Bible, Psalm chapter 71, verses 17 and 18. O oh God, thou hast told me from my youth, and hitherto have I declared thy wondrous works. Now also when I am old and grief headed, O oh God, forsake me not, until I have shown thy strength unto this generation, and thy power to everyone that is to come. Thank you very much. Indeed, it is incomplete for me without 
a word of appreciation and gratitude to the consent department, that is the social welfare department, for your sincere, selfless, and hardship effort. This program is very implemented. Again, I do not deserve to avail this kind of noble award, award, but by the grace of God and your mercy. I am also awarded in this auspicious occasion that is International Day of Older Persons on the 1st October 2022. I really thank you a lot and shall never forget till my last life journey of this world. God bless you. Thank you all.
Thank you.